Cerveza Crystal. Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. Hey, welcome back from jail. Yeah, thank you so much for getting me out. What did uh, you learn in jail? Um, uh, I learned stitches get sn- snitches. Mm-hmm. Um, and Stitches get snitches is what you learned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like stitches from Animal Crossing. Uh-huh. Is constantly being told on, on in jail. Uh, well, no, gets kind of snitched too. Kind of a popular guy. Mm. Knows everybody's secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I learned you're not supposed to ask what you're in for. No. Yeah. People will volunteer that information. Yeah. If they want to. Right. Yeah. My automatic thing is like, oh my God, what are you doing here? Oh my God. <laughs> hey, are you, do you want to sit together at lunch? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm, I, I have a wife now. Hey. Mazel tov. Thank you. And for International Women's Day. Yeah. Thank you for tattooing the plans to the prison on your body and breaking me out. Yeah. That's <laughs> very specific. Yeah. It's very specific, but it's very beautiful. How was- This come. This this chat gets it. They get it. They get it. Uh, you also found time to go to a, a, to a, a game convention. I did. I did a, a quick stop by on my fresh release tour into Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm not saying it different. I'm not going to say- Ooh. Fresh release tour is is what John Mulaney called his last yeah. <laughs> his last comedy tour after he got out of rehab. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, we have that in common. Um, I did. I went to Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, and uh, the universe really tried to tell me not to go. It did. So I was getting <laughs> so many texts from Sage. Yeah. about every possible thing that could go wrong with a single airline flight. So. Just a quick recap. I booked my flight a month in advance. I go to check in the night before my flight and it says your reservation is canceled. Not your flight, your reservation. And they go, we didn't charge your card. And I go, you couldn't charge my card or you didn't charge my card. Right. Because my card works using my card right now. Yeah. Just booked another flight with my card. And they're like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. No flight, no card, didn't charge money. So no flight. And I was like, but I have a confirmation number. And they were like, ooh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's so weird. Yeah, oh, that's here's such a weird yeah, bummer. Yeah, it's confirmation that we canceled your flight. Yeah. Give us the number. Give us the number. What's the number? Tell me the number. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't remember. Tell me the no. Go ahead. Tell okay. me the number. C. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. One. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. You fuck you. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. I can yeah, confirm yeah. that. Absolutely. Fuck you. Yeah. So that's pretty much what American Airlines said. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, there was just nothing to it. They were like, Yeah, we see that you did get a confirmation that you did book a flight, and then we unbooked it because fuck you in particular. Yeah. Um. So then I was like, okay, I have to book another flight for tomorrow. That's going to be so expensive. And it was twice as expensive. Yeah. Booked another flight for you tomorrow. You know those last minute flights to Louisville. The problem is- Everybody's trying to get to Louisville. That's the exact opposite problem. The problem is there's no flights to Louisville from Los Angeles because right. who the fuck is leaving Los Angeles to go to Kentucky? Sorry. Sorry to anybody in Kentucky. I had a very nice time once I got there. But- my flight gets delayed, my mm-hmm. flight gets delayed, my flight gets delayed. Finally, okay, flight's coming in. I go to the airport. I get on the airplane. We're doing it. God, I'm finally on the airplane. I'm finally going. Uh, we start to roll away to take off, and uh, then we stop. And we hear over the loudspeaker, uh, sorry, the engine is leaking fuel. Uh, we're actually going to need a minute. And they have to roll us all the way back to the gate. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we sit there for an hour while they try and repair it, only for them to go, yeah, we're not going to be able to fix that. So everybody back off the plane. Now, this is one of those things where Mm -hmm. they knew it was leaking fuel. Mm -hmm. They tried to fix it. They loaded you on because you were waiting too long. Yeah, probably. And then after you were waiting, but not waiting so long that they had to give you anything, Uh they pulled you back off. Yes. If they can keep doing that. Right. They just keep you in purgatory forever. They don't have to give you anything. So we get off and they're like, don't worry, everybody. There's another flight right now that you all can get on to Las Vegas uh, because that's where my connection was. And I went, yeah, but I've missed the second half of my journey. I was the only person on that plane going to Kentucky. Weird. Shocking. I know going from Las Vegas to Kentucky. Um, And they were like, oh yeah, no, you in particular are absolutely fucked. Uh, There are absolutely no more flights going to this tiny airport in Kentucky anymore. Oh, you were going going to Kentucky? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Um, Do you have a confirmation number? Oh yeah, Uh, Uh, C, eight, Uh J, nine, Mm -hmm. four, three, one. Yeah, fuck you. 
Do you want to try the last number and see if that no, changed it? No, fuck you, absolutely. Okay. It says here in the computer, <sighs> Okay. eat shit. Uh, yeah, so then I was like, can I go to any of the n nearby mm -hmm. airports? You can go to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Nope, none of them. None of them had more flights today. So I had to go back home. Yep. And then I had to go to a further away airport, an hour away airport mm -hmm. to leave at six in the morning. Yeah. And still didn't get there until 6 p.m. I love it. I love I love air travel. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, once you got there, was it a good was it a good convention? Were the games there? There, yeah, the games were there. Great. Uh, there were two more things about the travel. One oh, on sorry. my last flight, uh, which was only a forty five minute flight, the entire plane was rumbling and shaking, and I was like, "Fuck, this is why. This is why all my flights got canceled. The universe was telling me not to go to Kentucky. This plane is going to crash, and yeah. it's going to be my fault for not listening. It's fine. It made it. And when I checked into my hotel, which was a Hampton Inn, um, not. Not great. Uh, the woman checking me in goes, everybody asks if it's okay to walk around here at night. And then she backs up to look at me so she can see me over the desk and goes, I think you'll be fine. Oh. And I went, what? And she's like, I think you can handle yourself. I think you can handle it. And I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to thank you, number one, for the vote of confidence, but number two, I'd rather not have to handle anything. But handle what? I'd what is gonna happen? I'd like to not handle anything. What am on my I trip. handling? Like it is a compliment. I'll take it as that. But also like Were hey, you still wearing tell your prison jumpsuit? What? Oh shit, maybe that was it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it was the orange jumpsuit yeah. doing it. Um so I I did I did walk and survive just fine. That's good. The The convention was Gamma Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an open to the public convention. It's just for people who make games and make things about games. Yeah. And that's us. It's just for uh, it's just for convicts trying to get back into society and yeah. into the games industry. Yeah, it's about reintegrating into board games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning. Uh, while we were gone, Alex, what did you get up to? I went to Disneyland for the first time which was an absolute blast. And the I also first have to time say, for birthday. For birthday yeah. on Wednesday. Everybody who hasn't wished Alex a happy birthday yet, you better do so right freaking now. Um, and I absolutely killed it. I planned like no tomorrow. I hit every big ride across two parks in a single day. Wow. Amazing. More like no tomorrow land. You know what I mean? Tomorrow land. Um. <laughs> and it was a blast. I had a great time. Uh, some of my family came to visit and we, we killed it. It was raining. So I got absolutely drenched. We went on Big Thunder Railroad outside in the rain. Yeah. And the first second as we took off, like hoods whipped back, pelted in the face. Someone screamed behind us and we all started laughing. That's was, the best. Perfect. Thunder Railroad used to be my favorite ride when yeah. I was a kid. I used, to, I used to have to ride Thunder Railroad when we got there in the morning and when we left at night. That's great. Yeah. What's everyone's favorite ride now? What's your fa what was your favorite now that you've been there? Yeah, what's number one? Ooh, I actually, so we started with Radiator Springs and mm -hmm. that was kind of perfect for the morning. It was yeah. like really beautiful outside. Uh, but Rise of the Resistance is killer. Like walking in to Star Wars land, I had that feeling of, I can't believe this is real. Just yeah. Like pure awe. And then yeah. the scale of the stuff inside that ride, it's so immersive. Yeah. It's the best it, it thing really they've ever done. Me. It's the best thing anyone's ever done. It's the best it's ride fantastic. in the history of rides. I cried the first time I went on Rise of the Resistance yeah. and that was expected. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't expect to cry the second time I went on Rise of the Resistance. Just keep crying. You know what I mean? Every like, time. I went to the one at Disney World and then somewhat recently I went to the one here and I was like, oh, I'm crying again because I'm in Star Wars. Uh, I saw a video the other day. My favorite, so one of my favorite genres of video is little kids uh, in full costume at Disney. Ah, uh, yeah. And somebody, there was a little Kylo Ren who was on Rise of the Resistance, and the part where the uh, where the ship opens up and you're in the First Order base, uh -huh. a First Order officer walks in and tells you that you're all under arrest by mm -hmm. the First Order, and she looks down and there's Kylo Ren. She goes, "Of course, except for you." Uh, except for you, Supreme Leader. Supreme Leader, please come with me. I hope everything is uh, is to your liking. Uh, but to everybody else, she was yeah. like, but to him, she was like, Supreme Leader, we had no idea that you were coming to to uh, look at the base today. Uh, we hope you find every, and I was just like, God damn it. Look. They're so, listen, Ugh. listen, business practices. We don't have to talk about We don't have right to now. talk about. The moments, this is why they're allowed to get away with the things yeah, that they get away genuinely. with. It's because they'll go in front of Congress and they'll show that video. And everybody's like, oh, well, how can you say that's bad? Everybody's Look, like, as somebody who doesn't even like kids that much and hates capitalism, God, I love that there is a place that that kid can go be Kylo Ren 
damn, I am such a sucker for that stuff. Oh, for sure. Ugh. It's so good. It's so good. It's so great. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. We're so happy to see you. We have some lovely, lovely stuff for you today. Of course, we're going to take a look at that Fallout trailer. Of course, we are. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're going to talk about some uh, some Avatar news because we are your official source for Avatar news, even though Avatar <laughs> doesn't know it yet. Yeah. But, but we're going to keep saying it until uh, either Netflix or Avatar Studios calls us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so far, nothing, but... But keeping an eye on the line. You know what I mean? Uh, we, we are going to talk about that rooster teeth shutdown. Yep. Uh, but first, we do want to talk to you about our sponsor, Cerveza Cristal. <laughs> Sage. Yeah, Anthony. Cerveza Cristal is my favorite thing to happen on the internet in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you all are aware of this. Uh huh. In 2003, the country of Chile. Mm -hmm. was showing the original Star Wars trilogy on television for the first time. And they said, we can't, we can't interrupt Star Wars for commercials. No, it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. You can't break the immersion. It would be completely inappropriate to break the immersion. This is the mm -hmm. first time in the, in the country that somebody is allowed to broadcast this trilogy of films. We cannot interrupt it. Yeah. Uh, and yet- we are a television network. So we do have to have advertisements. What can we do? And they came up with the most clever idea in the world. Alex, please, with audio, let's roll this. <laughs> are we playing it from? Okay, great. There's no nothing. audio. Swap, Play it from Anthony. Swap to, my, swap yeah. to mine, please. That's all good. You have to rewind it, Anthony. No, it's okay. No lo conocí. Era el mejor piloto estelar de la galaxia. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He was un astuto best. guerrero. Yeah. Entiendo que tú también has llegado a ser un excelente piloto. Sure. Yeah. Era un buen amigo. We're gonna yeah. hit for playing this movie. Lo que me recuerda. We're gonna get so hit. Tengo okay. algo yeah. para ti. That's right. We had something for you. When you were old enough. Cerveza Cristal. Cerveza Cristal. There are multiple clips of this. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this one is just called Cerveza Cristal 4. Yeah, check and it out. Swamp. Oh, training hard. Yeah. Thank goodness in this tree. That's, that's how we don't break the immersion of Star Wars. That's we right. We want to keep people immersed in Star Wars. That's right. So a, co a commercial just, would ruin it. Yeah. A commercial but, would absolutely ruin it. But Luke Skywalker enjoying himself a nice cold cerveza cristal out of a tree. That's staying in it. That's staying in there's there's such a good one of the emperor in the throne room yeah, pulling one where he to, reaches where he reaches and it shows like a close up of his fingies going like this <laughs> to like call it yeah. through the forest. It's fucking great. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the internet has has latched onto this. This was not a bit. I first when I saw this on on Twitter, I was like, "This is a bit." Yeah. Let me read into this. It was not a bit. No, that's real. It was not a bit. Um. The internet is having a great day, a great week, yeah. a great lifetime. Yeah. Just splicing Cerveza Cristal into everything. As they should. Um, I want all of the people that have the uploads of the like pre-re-CGI'd mm -hmm. version of Star Wars, like everybody who uploads it to all of the websites where you can download the pre-CGI so, version of so it legally. So this is for Topher Grace and Topher Grace only? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want them to splice in Cerveza Cristal. Yeah. Like, this is the only true version of Star Wars. Uh, people have been splicing it into the prequels, the sequels. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been some good ones with Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, the, people have been just splicing it into everything, and I love it. If Let me tell you something. If you had not been out of town uh -huh. and we had had time to plan, yeah. I wanted to do, like, two or three Cerveza crystals, like, in like inserts yeah. today. Yeah. 
It's all I've labels. Been, I've got I've got a cricket. We can make stuff. It's all I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. It's all I've been thinking about. Uh, Clone Chow in the uh, live studio audience is saying, "Well, I mean, the Starbucks is in Game of Thrones, right? So for Game of Thrones, it would be like, hey, it's Starbucks, right? <laughs> yeah, you know the Starbucks song. Yeah, of course, the Starbucks song. Yeah, the classic. Uh, I absolutely love Cerveza Cristal. Mm -hmm. If you have a moment, do just uh, waste. Waste your employer's time today. Yeah. And just look at Cerveza Crystal memes. Uh, Gina Marie D said, this is kind of off topic, but where I live, we still have Coke vending machines with episode one ads on the front of them. Do you remember those? Yes. So I take a photo with one every time I'm there. That's incredible. Wow. We, um, once for the Star Wars show, we went to one of the warehouses mm -hmm. in the Bay Area, one of the old warehouses where they were just stuff boxed up and we were like, somebody has to go through all this stuff. Yeah. It's gotta be cataloged. Like we have to know what's in here. Cool. Um, Dream. And there was some cool stuff. We found a uh, Cad Bane's hat from, uh, from back when he used to do theme park and video game appearances. We found Howard the God. Duck's feet. No way. But the best thing we found. Cerveza Crystal. <laughs> um, the best thing we found was one of the Jar Jar Pepsi statues. You oh remember my like God, you could yeah. win a Jar Jar Pepsi statue? Wild. Uh, and we found one, we brought it back to the office and they're like, hey, that's gotta go in the archive. We're like, fuck your archive. <laughs> Finders keepers is what we say. Yeah, what's the confirmation number for where we should put this? Uh, C178J. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Fuck you. Oh, okay. Uh, we were just like, hey, this is a real Indiana Jones situation where you put your top men on it. Yeah. And you put it in a box and there it was. And let me tell you something. We found it. Now it's ours. Now it's ours. And that Jar Jar is still in the StarWars.com office. Uh, that's amazing. When I uh, was a kid, Cherry Coke became very popular for a minute. There was mm -hmm. like an early 2000s thing of Cherry Coke. And it used to have that like black and red cracked kind of look to it. That was on all the vending machines and all the advertisements. Yeah. And I became obsessed with this beverage just because it looked like Darth Maul. To me, that was... Darth Maul. <laughs> Darth Maul's a big cherry Coke guy. But like, it looked like the no, paint lines on yeah. Darth Maul to me. And I was like, that's the, I want the Darth Maul soda. I want the fucking Darth Maul soda. That's cool as hell. And I bet there was just already a correlation from the Star Wars vending machines advertisements on yeah. Coke that I was just like, yeah. And Darth Maul's Coke. Duh. I just like to think of uh, everybody on Dathomir drinking Shirley Temples. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> the witches of the like the <laughs> yeah the night sisters of Dathomir just. <sighs> if I don't drink from a straw, it ruins my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh whoo. <laughs> that was great. Oh, hey, thanks for that, Anthony. Thank hey, you for starting us there. Don't thank me. Thanks, Cerveza Cristal. And thank you to Cerveza Cristal for sponsoring this episode of It's Too Early. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got actual lots of news. We actually have a lot of news today, and I'm trying to figure out where to start. I think we should jump into maybe the big thing. Sure, let's jump let's into the big thing. Let's just do it. Uh, Rooster Teeth is shutting down after 21 years. Rooster Teeth, of course, a massive, absolute giant in digital media, uh, in games and comedy Mm -hmm. of sorts, uh, with a, a storied past of many kinds um, that we're not gonna get into. Yeah. This isn't gonna be like our Vice deep dive. Uh, we're just gonna tell you, they're shutting down after 21 years. Uh, in the recent generation of folks working over there uh, on both the Rooster Teeth side and the Fun House side, we have a lot of friends mm -hmm. that uh, woke up to some terrible news this week. That's and right. we're very, very sorry to hear that for them. Uh, uh, it's just kind of the next, uh, the next casualty in being owned by Warner Brothers, unfortunately. Yeah. This is this is a real bummer. Uh, we do know that Warner is going to try, they said, to uh, to sell off some of the properties. I would imagine yeah. they're trying to get some money for Ruby right now. They're trying to get some money for- Red versus Blue. Uh, for Red versus Blue. Some of the stuff that still has yeah. uh, a, a real diehard audience. Some, yeah. some stuff that has brand recognition. So uh, they're selling those and also the Roost podcast they're trying to sell, which is very interesting. Yeah. Um, it's there. It's just part of the, it's part of the Warner brothers fire sale. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a bummer. Uh, I was, I've been really in, into best friends today, which is one of their new shows and podcasts, oh. which is absolutely hilarious. Uh, or was yeah. absolutely hilarious. Rip. Um, obviously we have some very good friends at, uh, at Funhouse. 
yeah. uh, here at the show. The Funhouse did a stream yesterday, if you didn't watch it, uh, that basically said they have a little bit of time left. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're going to try to do as much as they can, like things that they've been wanting to do for a while and things for the fans that the, the yeah. fans have been wanting from them for a while and try to close it out as big as they can. But yeah. they have no idea how much time that even is. They, yeah. Everybody was told in an all hands yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and an all hands at like the same time as the press release went out, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so they really didn't have any lead time on this. Um, and like just talking from friends that have worked there, like that I've spoken to recently, it does seem like it was completely out of nowhere for them. I mean, it, to some extent, you have to know that maybe something isn't performing in the way. You have to know you're under WB and you see all the hack and slash happening. Yeah. Um, but like, I have friends that I've spoken to very recently that were on the Rooster Teeth team that are part of like the new wave of it that are just like, we're just trying to make it better. We know it's been a problem in the past and we're just trying to, to do something good with it now. Yeah. Um, which, you know, and they've been very, you know, and they've been very, very smart about monetization since the beginning at Rooster mm -hmm. Teeth. I don't believe, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, clearly Rooster Teeth must have been uh, a money losing division for Warner Brothers. I don't think that's true. Uh, Rooster Teeth, uh, remember has, they do, they do everything from fan events to their own merchandising in house. Yeah. They, you know, they have a, they have a lot of fingers and a lot of pies and, um, I would not be, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's a, that's, a, that's a funny phrase. It is a funny phrase, uh, but uh, it's it's pretty shy. Even Funhouse was talking about like, hey, we, you know, we started a, a Funhouse membership program last year. Yeah. Just to, just to like literally show we've got people, we've got money coming in. Yeah. We are profitable. Right. Uh, but, you know, we've talked about this before. Uh, Warner Brothers doesn't want to see a little bit of profit. Nope. They want to see all the money. Yeah. Or a really they want great you tax gone. write off. Yeah. yeah. So there are a few properties that can escape. Uh, a lot of people were already talking about, like, oh, well, like Funhouse could totally survive on their own and all of these things. We don't know what that means for who owns what. It is possible that that crew could set out on their own, potentially under a new name or something like yeah. that. There's no announcement so of anything they, like so that. So they did say on the stream yesterday, they've mm -hmm. never been independently owned, even though it it does give off that impression. Yeah. They've always been, since they left uh, Inside Gaming, mm -hmm. they left and Rooster Teeth immediately funded them. They've always been a division of Rooster Teeth. Yeah. So they don't own the Funhouse name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and they don't know what they're going to do. Uh, and it all depends on, I mean, really in this situation, it depends on literally everybody in the room yeah. looking at each other and going, okay, do we want to start a business right now? Right. And how do we get the money for it? Yeah. And that's not always an easy thing to do. No. And everybody's at different places in their lives. And it yeah. might be, you know, it might be the sort of thing where like, some of your favorite shows or some of your favorite things that Rooster Teeth does, mm -hmm. the people who are on those shows are like, yeah, I like this, but- if it's not a steady paycheck, like I don't want to devote my life to this. Some of these things, uh, when you see these channels go down and then those creators go independent, uh, a lot of the time that means, okay, well now I'm going to do the same work, but lose my health insurance. Yeah. Uh, and that's not sustainable for a lot of people. A lot of people then have to go and take other full-time work to mm -hmm. be able to have a guaranteed salary and continue to have health insurance because America. Yeah. I mean, you look at, um, you know, obviously there were some some people left Funhouse uh, a, a little earlier on. You know, mm -hmm. you, you look at like Lawrence and and Bruce, uh, Bruce Green. Uh, they they left and became full time streamers, and it took them it took them a while to start making money off of that. Yeah. Even with you know the sort of like bringing that audience with them, it's yeah. not it's not an easy thing to do without the without the help of a company. And unfortunately, companies. When I say the help of a company, yeah, it's not help. No, <laughs> they don't want to help you. Sure, no. <laughs> So uh, we wish all the best to uh, our lovely friends that um, got hit with this this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm i very happy to see a lot of them in like decent spirits of like, it's going to be okay. We're all going to bounce back. Uh, I think there's a lot of really, really talented folks um, that I, I hope, I wish them a great peace this week and everyone to leave them alone. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. If you have, <laughs> if, if you have anything for them, I hope it is well wishes and money. Yeah. Uh, but in the continuing uh, Warner Brothers chopping block, there mm -hmm. are there are fears, there are rumors. It is not uh, it is not definite yet, but um, it looks like Warner Brothers Discovery mm -hmm. because they also own Turner, yep. which owns Cartoon Network, which owns Adult Swim. <laughs> it looks like uh, 
old Adult Swim library games are getting delisted and developers are getting noticed that their games are being taken down. Yeah, so um, the game Small Radio's Big Televisions is a beloved Adult Swim game from an indie creator. Uh, just game. got the notice that in the next 60 days, they will be pulling Small Radio's Big Televisions from storefronts. That's so fascinating to me because I wonder... So that's, that was obviously, uh, Owen Deary was the developer of that. It's yeah. a beautiful game with an amazing soundtrack. And I think Owen, if Owen doesn't own the game, mm -hmm. which is what my big question is, like if they take the game down, is Owen allowed to relist it? And if not, here's what I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. At least go to Bandcamp and get the soundtrack. Yeah. Because it's a gorgeous soundtrack. So it doesn't seem like they own the game right now. They say that uh, we've asked Warner Brothers simply to transfer the game to our Steam publisher account so that it can stay active, but so far they have said no, with the reason being that they made the universal decision not to transfer the games back to the original studios and do not have the resources to do so. That's such bullshit because it's literally flipping a switch in Steam. Yeah, they did respond with that saying, no, the, pro the transfer process is not complicated. It likely takes about two minutes on their end and they're just refusing to do it. So with that, uh, the rumor from here, so that's fact, that's not rumor, that's what's happening in the you know, next 60 days. But the rumor is that this is going to start coming down for all of the Adult Swim games. Um, which would be an absolutely wild thing to do. Yeah. Here's the thing, if you sign up, it, it, it really depends on what mm -hmm. your publishing agreement and distribution agreement is. Yeah. Just because a publisher distributes a game doesn't mean that they own that game uh, outright. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm, you know, if I was Owen or any of these developers, mm -hmm. uh, I would be getting in touch with probably the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Yeah. If I didn't have a lawyer of my own uh, and seeing what the legality is on this, because just because they're holding on to it, mm -hmm. they don't get squatters rights on your things. Right. Large corporations don't get squatters rights. And I think one of the things that they're doing mm -hmm. is they're just saying, we don't want to transfer this stuff back because if we transfer this stuff back, mm -hmm and then you make money on it. Mm -hmm. What if we transfer it back to you and you go with a new publisher and the new publisher makes a ton of money on it? We'd we hate don't, that. We don't like that. We'd hate that. We'd hate it because we'd that hate could- We'd hate to see that happen. That could be our money. And we're, so we'd rather no one have money. Yeah, because we have a lot of money. The team behind this game uh, is basically like pleading for it. They're like, you know, it's one thing to delist it, but we're terrified of it being removed from people's libraries that paid for our game. Uh, and right now we have no control to stop that. And that's very scary. Uh, they followed up with, I feel like it needs to be said somewhere, but video games are art. Video games connect us. Video games are important. Video games are part of our culture, heritage, and should be preserved. When you're working with purely digital products, nothing is going to stay around for very long. Um, so they're very concerned with that and trying to figure out what they can do next. Yeah. Uh, if you look on Steam, you can see the entire list of Adult Swim games that could be on the chopping block for this potentially. Uh, personally, I haven't played Adult Swim games on Steam. I think back to early mobile and browser-based yeah. Adult Swim games. They had a lot of Flash games that were yeah. like really uh, huge. Robot Unicorns Attack is mm -hmm. uh, like a huge portion of my high school years. Um, uh, also amateur surgeon, amateur surgeon was, was great. one of the first like mobile games that felt like a, like the adult swim mobile games felt like full games mm -hmm. on your phone. Yeah. When those I look, were a huge deal. Yeah. When I look at these, um, super puzzle platformer deluxe was big, uh, rise and shine traverser, mm -hmm. um, super house of dead ninjas. I mean, these are, you know, you can look and see the, the release dates of these games. Adult swim has not been publishing games. Yeah. Uh, as much, but you know, so these games were big in like 2013 to 2018. Right. Uh, but they may be in your library and like, Hey, yeah. If it's in your library, mm -hmm. you would expect that you'd be able to grab it. Yeah, you paid for it. These were not free games. I mean, you can see the prices on here even now. At this point, you see $15, $7, $10 all throughout this. And like any amount of money that you paid for a game that should be a game you get to continue to play. Yeah. And I'll, you know, we can't speak for these developers, but I will mm -hmm. say something that uh, that James Willem said on the Funhouse stream. They went live and people were buying Funhouse memberships and he was like, don't do that. Yeah. He's like, that money no longer goes to us. Right. Uh, we don't know what happens now with, uh, with these games mm -hmm. and whether the money goes to Owen, any of these games that are, are being kept up. 
sometimes right before, like a week or two before these games get delisted, mm -hmm. a lot of corporations will say, well, there's a threshold that your game needs to reach before we write you a check. Yeah. So if your game hasn't made a thousand dollars in revenue in the last 90 days, we don't pay you anything. Yeah. We wait for you to hit that. So they may like, they may be delisting these games owing developers money. Right. I'm not saying they are, but this is a situation. Yeah. Uh, owing developers money that they will mm -hmm. never see if these games get delisted. Right. Um, now, I will say the answer is not um, to immediately go, let's pirate the games. Right. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> Before you do that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait for an update from these developers and see what's happening. Yeah. I have an update. Oh, from Alex, developers. we would love this update. Yes. What's up? Which is that they have made the game free to download. On their website, you can go to fire-face.com and mm -hmm. download it for free for PC right now. Immediately grab it. Amazing. Yep. Now, do we know by any means if that's like something that can stay, if that is a Band-Aid, if that's something that like they can legally do or they're like, hey, let's try and get this up so as many people can essentially back up their game as possible? No idea. They yeah. haven't made it free on Steam. I'm not sure they can do that. Yeah. It's just a direct download on their website. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm very curious to see what the like kind of rights holding on this is. If that's mm -hmm. like a quick fire sale, if you can back up your game because you've already bought it, come and get it here. I'd um, say I'd say download it now. Yeah. Uh, this seems like the like the sort of thing where one of them said, uh, fuck it. This is we're going to ask forgiveness and not permission on this right. one. And as soon as we get a letter from from uh, Adult Swim, we'll have to remove it. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. So it does feel it. that way. Um, the Warner Brothers Discovery stuff is absolutely out of control. It is endlessly upsetting. It really is. Um, so let's, let's move on. Let's we move all, on. We all know how, we all know that it's endlessly We upsetting. know. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Avatar. Sure. I love those blue cats and their search for water. The other one. The the the, the first one the before benders? they were before they were blue cat and the benders. Oh yes, the yeah. good one. Uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender live action on Netflix has officially been renewed for its next two seasons. Uh, that of course would be the entire like the animated original series. So that would be all of Avatar. That's book one, two, and three. Do do we know how many episodes per season they got? Uh, I don't know how many episodes per season they got. They say uh, there's no word yet on the final episode count of the next two seasons. Obviously, the first season was eight episodes. I'd so love are, to see them get a couple more. I would love to see even just 10. I think 10 would make a difference in yeah. how many stories they had to combine for this. I would really love to see that uh, because also season one is the lightest. Yes. Season two and three are most definitely the like have so much more plot to get through and so much more character development to get through. Yeah. So fingers crossed uh, that they get a little more out of those ones. That would make me very happy. I do think they're going to need it. If they continue at the pace that they've done for this first season of live action, I do think they have the, the potential to have a really bad second and third season. Oh, yeah. Specifically the third Specifically season. Specifically the third. They would, yeah. they would be rushing things so so much they just, that you would you would lose so much characterization yeah. and so much plot by the third season. Yeah, we um, just can't. We just really can't. There's too many things. Like every episode is important once you get to season three. The first episode has a lot of like fun, silly bottle episodes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, even when you look at the later bottle episodes in two and three, like when you get to Ember Island and stuff like that, like that's their bottle episode. And it's like, incredibly important it's for character development. so important and like, for relationships between yeah. characters. Specifically, that's like the episode where we understand Azula, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have time for that on the current production schedule that they did of like eight episodes packing everything in. They did a lot of things where it's like there were two events, we're putting them in the same place so they can happen yeah. at the same time in the first season. We can't do that. No, I hope they I hope they get- uh, 12? 10 or 12 would be I'd perfect. love to see, I think 12. 12 would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, because twelve, you're looking at twelve. That's that's basically a a network television season order for a yeah. drama. That's pretty standard, you know. Yeah, uh, and that would give them so much time mm -hmm. and, and so many things to work with. I think you could do it really well with twelve per, with with twelve per episode. I think so too. I um, think that would be really great. And I am super excited as somebody who has mixed feelings on the series. I am super excited to see it get renewed. I'm excited to see where it goes. Well, because the worst thing, even these imperfect Netflix adaptations. Yeah. Even even when they're imperfect, it it gets annoying when they don't get finished. Yeah. So many of these things get canceled after the first season, and you're just like, well, I 
I was pretty invested. Yeah. Like I wasn't, in, I wasn't loving every I moment like of it, but I would like to have given it invested. time to get better. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of TV shows do that. Uh, right. You know, that's why so many of these like six and eight episode, like streaming mini series events. Yeah. Don't work is because so many TV shows, like mm -hmm. you need that time to ramp up. You really do. Um, and look, the first season is the weakest season of the animated series. I'm mm -hmm. saying it. So I don't know. Yeah. It could only really hopefully get better from here. Like that would be great. Uh, also in thinking about just like larger episode orders, I was thinking about Andor, mm -hmm. uh, which was like a good example of like Star Wars getting a few more episodes on something and doing great work with it. Yeah. Do you see it's getting a physical release? Yes. A Love lot of that. things are getting a physical release. I mean, we were just talking but about a, how a lot like, of things, a lot of like Moon Knight's getting one. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple more that are getting, that are getting physical yeah. releases. Andor was just the one that really excited me. Yeah. Um, that was the only one that I was like, oh, do I want a physical copy of Andor? And I don't buy physical media. So. Hey. What about Willow? Hey. What about Willow? We already know. Uh, we already know. Continuing. Continuing a little bit. More Avatar uh, news. Into Avatar stuff. Uh, Korra was trending this morning and I thought it was going to be because Korra came to Fortnite. Yeah. Korra's on the new battle pass. Uh, when we were talking about characters that would have loved guns. Oh, Korra loves Korra a gun. Korra in her season one would have loved Korra, guns. Korra with a gun. That first season, I was rewatching a little bit of Korra last night. I restarted the series. Mm -hmm. And um, man, she really does just show up and ruin and wreck things because nobody taught her not to. She's just- yeah. A way too strong teenager that is like, I broke a building. Is that a problem? Uh, she would have loved guns. So Cora is now uh, on the battle pass in Fortnite. But that isn't why Cora was trending. It's not? No. Cora is trending because people are resurfacing a piece of information that we already kind of had, which <laughs> is uh, a new Avatar series uh, is set to release in 2025 following the next Avatar from the Earth Nation. That's cool. So that's something we knew about. Mm -hmm. It's something that was like on that, like, ooh, we think that's happening. Supposedly that's happening. And it is yeah. seeming to come. Because we know that Avatar Studios was like, we're working on animated things. Exactly. So it seems like that's coming to a little more of like a solid plan, mm -hmm. right? That we can count on. But a lot of people were replying, oh my God, that means no more Korra. Well, okay. What I'm gonna say is uh -huh. not necessarily. Yeah. You could always go back and tell more Korra stories. Korra could potentially play a large part in this, uh, you know, in, in like flashbacks. Yeah, and in flashbacks. And, I'm yeah. like, well, cause that was the response is everybody's like, oh no, if there's a new avatar, that means Korra's, Korra's dead. dead. Yeah, but like what led up to that? Yeah. Like, you know, there are a lot of, you ever watch a Star Wars cartoon? Here's the cool thing about a Star Wars yeah. cartoon. A Star Wars cartoon will tell you it's about something and yeah. then they'll be like, but also we know, we know that we never finished the story of this person. We'll, we'll get it. So it's half of this show is actually yeah. that. So get ready. I was just surprised to see so many people reacting in that way mm -hmm. um, because I was like, what did you think was gonna happen? That they were gonna do another season of Korra? Now, Korra definitely did have an ending. There are things that we wanna see, but I, I love, I love The Legend of Korra. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my controversial Avatar take is that The Legend of Korra is actually a better series. The first series is probably my favorite, but I yeah. think Korra is actually a better series um, in, in some ways. But it did, like it had an ending. Like that show did not leave off without an ending. Yeah. Uh, mostly had, we just want to see Korra and Asami kiss. And I get that, I yeah. do too. And it had, like Korra had an extended life in in the comics and the graphic, like the graphic novels and stuff like that. So there, there got to be some extended stuff. I know it's not the same as a series, but like. Did Korra get much in the comics? Korra got, yeah. I'm like, not, I haven't read the Korra, uh, anything after Korra in the comics. I've read through the Kiyoshi books and I read mm -hmm. through like, the search and like the follow-ups from the original series. But um, I, I think it makes perfect sense to move on. And I also think that I am somebody who doesn't feel like we need more adventures from Aang's crew and we know that we're getting them anyways. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take any avatar I can get. But the way that in The Legend of Korra, we got to learn what the rest of Aang's life was like from both the like surviving characters yeah. and also just like flashbacks in history and what the world is like now because of them. Mm -hmm. um, and the answer is it's bad dad. Yeah, a bunch, a bunch of bad is, parents. The answer is terrible parenting. The answer is a bunch of bad parents. Um, but I would be perfectly happy with seeing kind of how Korra affected the world through where the world is now. Yeah. That a new avatar is here. And I think it's it's impossible to tell the new avatar story without going into that at least a little bit. Oh yeah. Um, but hopefully people will get enough. And the other thing is like, mm -hmm. 
it's it's one of those unfortunate things where a, a, a portion of the horrible people on the internet turned Cora into a, a divisive thing. It's not really, but when when executives look at Cora and making another Cora, they're like, "How much money do we have to spend on just being on social media Blah. and and just defending our brand Blah. because of this?" Blah. And it's such a bummer. Hey, it's International Women's Day. Show a little respect Show a little to respect. Cora. How do we feel? Just going to going to my screen here for a second, Alex. Mm -hmm. Here's here's Cora. She doesn't have a gun in her hand yet. Uh huh. But here's Cora. I feel like it's an all right model. It's not the best. It's not the best Fortnite model I've ever seen. I mean, she looks like Cora. She looks like Cora. I don't have any complaints about that. Yeah. It's just not. I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a de it's a decent mm -hmm. translation. I would have to see. It, I have to see it in motion. Yeah. There's something about like the sometimes when uh, when Fortnite does cell shading and things, yeah, that where I just I look at it and I'm like, that's not quite what it looks like Wrong. in the cartoon. Yeah, I'd say this is pretty. This is pretty good. This I is like a little bit Fortniteized, but it's primarily just Cora in yeah. animation style. It looks pretty good. Um, I'd have to see her with an AK in her hand before I knew. Yeah, it. obviously. You know, and I'm sure you will. Yeah. Uh, the Indecider said, "So will the Earth Avatar be set in the modern esque time period, or will it be futuristic? It'll be uh, however many years after Cora. So Cora is obviously set in like a very steampunky kind of. We're figuring out how to use bending as technology. Uh, depends on how long Cora lived." I think, and then it'll probably be like you know, unless they're skipping a full cycle. Yeah, they're not. Like, and if they're doing like, this is the one immediately after Korra. We know just based I, on that Earth comes next. It yeah, is. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If unless they're skipping a full cycle. Whoa, you, you mean like the the entire three of them in between? That's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Four of them. Just to th just to like throw us off. I don't think we're gonna see futuristic. I think no. we're I think we're a couple avatars away from futuristic. Uh, yeah, and like also, what is futuristic in this? You know, um, so I, I think that it's probably gonna be a, a much more comparable to Korra world. I personally want to go backwards. Mm -hmm. I want to see before Aang real bad. Yeah, because we know who some of those avatars are, and some of them are real dope. Yeah. And that would be nice. Uh, I, I could do cool. three seasons of Kyoshi. I could do a hundred seasons of Kiyoshi. <laughs> I love Kiyoshi. I know. I love. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of cool avatars that we see throughout the series that uh, would be dope as hell. But, um, you know, yeah. I want to uh, see Juan the first avatar. In additional animation news, mm -hmm. uh, we got a weird bit and we got a sad bit. <laughs> uh, the oh. sad bit, first of all, I do want to. Uh, we do want to uh, mention mm -hmm. uh, Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama uh, passed away. Yeah. Uh, at the age of 68, uh, absolutely one of the greatest to ever do it yeah. in comics, in animation, in mm -hmm. games, in everything. Yeah. Uh, Akira Toriyama was the absolute goat, and uh, it's a shame to see him gone. Really, really young, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I would have, I want, Akira, I wanted Akira Toriyama to be one of those uh, manga cause who lived until like 107 yeah. and was like still drawing stuff. Yeah. Like the guy who did like Golgo 13, who was just like, I'm 173 yeah. and I'm drawing Duke Togo assassinating people. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Ball did change the game for a lot of people. Um, and just like for the industry as a whole. So that's very sad oh to hear. God. The anime in America would be, or and around the world would be yeah. an entirely different thing if it were not for Dragon Ball. Oh, hundred percent. The introduction of anime to the West is like, Dra I mean, literally it, sitting on Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon's shoulders. Absolutely. Like that's it. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a bummer, a bummer to see him go. Now here's, here's a weird thing. And <laughs> so are you familiar with the movie series Twilight where the vampires love to play a baseball? Do you you know may the, have heard of them. They and they give birth to weird to weird CGI children. Yeah, where they sparkle. And you can call you can mm -hmm. as uh, as a twenty year old man mm -hmm. you can call dibs on dating a baby. Yeah. Do you remember those movies? Here, wait. Let's see if this refreshes it. Where the hell have you been, Loka? Bella, <laughs> right? If that, <laughs> if that been, activated Loka? something for you, you may be familiar with the hit uh, movie and book series, Twilight. Uh, then you might be excited to hear that they're rebooting Twilight. And that's not surprising. There's been a Twilight renaissance. There's been a Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart renaissance. Sure. There has been a re-diving into a love for Listen, Twilight. If something was cool yeah. 
10 to 20 years ago, we have got to resuscitate that course. Well, it's also we like, it's, it's in this weird place where like, it was absolutely shit on at the time mm -hmm. by like, everyone but the teenage fandom for it. Because right. everybody hates everything that teenage girls love. Yeah, I was gonna say, as a lot of these things are, right. it was the biggest thing in the world and also somehow- The most hated. The most hated. Um, that doesn't add up. And now people have come around in a lot of ways yeah. to genuinely love and appreciate Twilight. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe has that's something the reason. To do, has something to do maybe with those teenagers now being uh, adults with uh, in a specific income range. But also like, new teenagers are now obsessed with Twilight, yeah. even though like it's not in any way relevant to this current generation. No. Uh, well, I think that's why they like it. Yeah. It's because it's just so weird. It is. It like absolutely you, when is. You, when you watch it now, you go, that's so weird. Right. You, like you, you know, on a genuine level. Yeah. Like you watch, like they look at their moms and they go, on a genuine level. Right. You thought every part of this was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we don't know if the teens love it ironically or not. I think it's a divide. Yeah. Um. But all of that love for it has drummed up a Twilight reboot, animated series. <clears throat> now this is, this to me, when when I hear something like this, I do think mm -hmm. somebody fumbled. Mm -hmm. Like when I think about this, I think about the number of things that yeah. uh, that go through the development cycle in Hollywood, mm -hmm. particularly like reboots or like adaptations. Oh, yeah. The supposed Buffy reboot that's been in uh, right. the works for 15 years. And what they'll do is yeah. they'll be like, well, we want to do this. And they'll be like, ah, oh, it's a lot of money and it's uh -huh. a lot of, we don't know if we want to do it. Yeah. It's like, well, what if we do it animated? Well, what if we do it right. uh, as, an, as an interactive mm -hmm. toy series? What if we do it as a, a, a line of desserts that yeah. come with lore on the back of the box. Mm -hmm. Like whoever owns the rights yeah. is just like, what can I do with this? What yeah. will you let me do? Stephanie Meyer is probably just throwing things at the wall. So right. a Twilight series has been rumored since last April. Um, mm -hmm. It's been something that's been talked about. People were waiting to hear the details on it. Uh, and this was that series and it was always intended to be animated, but that never made it to the news. Uh, so people have been like, Twilight series, they're doing a Twilight series. Hell yeah, I can't wait for the Twilight series. Uh, and then recently, Lionsgate Vice Chairman uh, Michael Burns in um, Q&A revealed that it's an animated series. Now, they did cite- That's wild. That the original book series did uh, then spawn three manga-inspired graphic novel adaptations. Sure. So it's possible that they're going off of that. So, I'm sorry. So uh, I'm sorry, Michael Burns. Uh, can you clarify whether you have the rights to the to the novel series Twilight, the movie series <laughs> Twilight, or the young adult graphic novel yeah. based on the books Twilight? Right. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. What are what is happening? Here? What is this happening? This reminds here? me of like there was there was a Rocketeer reboot in the works for like ten years. Yeah. And it sounded amazing, and it was like, oh my god, it's going to be set during like. It's going to be set during like uh, the 60s. It's going to be like the civil yeah. rights movement. There's mm -hmm. going to be like all this stuff where like the, like, you know, where like the rocketeer is like wearing the helmet and underneath the helmet, it's like, it's like a woman of color and like, yeah. the, you know, all, Changing this, every, all the meanings of all these things. All this yeah. stuff was like, and then by the time it came out, it was, it was on Disney Junior and it was about a little girl, a four-year-old girl who's the rocketeer. Cause like by the time they got to the end of, of just development and they were just like, please let us do something. And they were like, here's our, here's our big, bold idea for a, for a civil rights era rocketeer. Yeah. And, and like executives just kept chipping at it a little bit. And, right. a little bit. and I have a feeling a lot of these people, like they wake up one day and it's four years later and they go, how did I wind up making a cartoon for, for toddlers? Right. How did this project turn into a cartoon for toddlers? What is my life? Why is this Twilight show an animated series now? So uh, all we know right now is Stephanie Myers is, uh, oh, who is the author of the books. Sorry, no shade to the show. It was actually a very good show for little kids. Sure. It was very cute and very and very good. Yeah. If you had a five-year-old, uh -huh. great show, The Rocketeer. Mm-hmm. Great. 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 I don't want, I don't want, because there was somebody in the audience that was like, hey, my kid likes that show. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So Stephanie Meyer yeah. is uh, said to be involved in the the whatever in some capacity in the television adaptation, but nobody really knows uh, who the showrunner is going to be. There is no cast or crew announcers. Nobody attached to this. All we know is Lionsgate said we're doing it. So there's also every possibility. 
this disappears before it ever exists. Oh yeah. There's every possibility that that happens. Somebody like uh, uh, an executive mm -hmm. just dropping something like that yeah. at a Q&A is an executive trying to save something that's about to go under. Yeah. Cause usually, cause if something's going to happen, it's like, Hey, remember we don't mention this. We yeah. have, we have an ad campaign. We have a marketing thing. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, usually if an executive comes out and goes, and we're doing this, right. it usually means we don't know if we're doing this. Let's see how the audience responds. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I mean, it's getting a lot of attention. It's not positive attention, but no. it's attention. Maybe they'll be into that sort of thing. In 2020, Stephanie Meyer released um, Midnight Sun, of course, the most recent mm -hmm. addition to the Twilight series, uh, which was basically just like the gender and perspective switched Twilight. Uh, and when it was released uh, and talking about it on her website, uh, she said, I didn't really return to the story. I never actually left it. Whoa. Um, so Whoa. I don't know, man. What is that? She said, I didn't decide to finish it now. That That's just that how long more... it took to write. It was a very slow process. I was going to say, does that just mean you don't have any... Look, if you've made a lot of money, if you've made the money that yeah. Stephanie Myers made, yeah. you don't have to write another book if you don't want to. Right. But like, does that mean that you just, you sat around and you're like, I'm going to write something else. And it's like, no, no, I couldn't think of anything. She said, uh, it's hard to describe how frustrating it is to write a very long book where you can't create anything new, where everything is already scripted for you and you have no ability to go off of that script. When I write, I'm fueled by creation. That's what pulls me and pushes me forward. And there wasn't very much creation in this book. You chose to do this. Yeah. You chose to not write another Twilight book, but to go Uno reverse on the one you already did. Yeah, you don't, you, you didn't need to. You chose to make Twilight backwards. What about, what about a book about a talking cat who owns a business? Yeah. See what I mean? You could write a book about anything. Yeah. What about a, what about a book? Yeah. Where uh, Matt Damon buys right. a zoo. No, shit. That's the Matt Damon movie we bought a zoo. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ugh. I've got nothing else. So let's continue. Now it was kind of a gender swap. It was kind of just like a role reversal in it. Originally there was like a short story that she had written that was like a full gender swap of the story. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, well, that kind of was getting some attention. So it allowed me to write Midnight Sun and finish it. And that was just kind of like, that was it. And that's what I decided to do. Life okay. and death was the actual, um, like gender swapped version okay. of Twilight. Uh, now I have never watched all of Twilight. I've seen a little bit of the first movie and a little bit of the last movie. Have you seen the color grade on Twilight? I have. It's great. Uh, I've never read any of the books. <laughs> uh huh. And uh, did you see them play the baseball? I have seen them play the baseball. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to super massive black hole. Yes. It this just reading this and seeing the stuff for the animated series really makes me want to go through and do it all. But if, I want to do it in a fucked up order. I want to read Life and Death first. Mm -hmm. I want to read the gender swap Twilight first. Yeah. And then try and get through the series and then watch the movies. So you want a machete order? Yeah. I want a machete order. You want order. a machete order? My first Twilight <laughs> watching. I'm, I'm going to find a way to do the same to the Lord of the Rings. If you watch Twilight. Yeah, I was going to say, if you watch Twilight before you watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm in. I don't I'm know what my it. reaction will be. I don't know what it will do to yeah. our relationship if you well, watch Twilight before I Lord already of the Rings. did kind of machete the Lord of the Rings because I have seen the Hobbit movies. You've seen you've seen all of the Hobbit movies? I've seen the first two Hobbit movies. There's three, right? There's three Hobbit movies. I've seen movies. the first two Hobbit movies. The Hobbit is a book that's this thick. I know. It's for children. And there's children. three movies, yeah. Yeah. I know this. Uh, and I've seen the first two Hobbit movies. Hey, did you enjoy uh, when they were in those barrels on the river for 87 minutes? Not really. No. How could you? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you've watched the Hobbit movies first, yeah. you're going to love the Lord of the Rings. Because the Lord of the Rings in comparison to the Hobbit movies? Yeah. Damn. You're going to be like, shit, these are good. Yeah. I saw the Hobbit movies and I went, oh, it's good. It's cool. You know what I mean? Like, they weren't bad. Yeah. Uh, they were, they're fine. The Hobbit movies are fine. They... The thing about them is there's mm -hmm. just too little story for three movies. Yeah. And they were shot in that weird uh, 48 frames per second. Your mm -hmm. parents haven't turned off the motion smoothing on their TV. Yeah. So they just look weird. Yeah. Like every time the Hobbit's on a screen somewhere, I think my dad has been there and turned on the motion smoothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dave the Dragon Zine writer said, uh, the Hobbit came first, so that's the right order. 
I don't know if that makes it the right order. Like, I don't tell people to watch the Star Wars prequels first. I'm not like, no. yeah, start at episode one. No, you absolutely don't do that. You start at four yeah. because you want them to like it. Uh, and I say this as somebody who has a lot of love for the prequels. I would never recommend somebody start at episode one. No. Uh, and I assume that's I, what watching The Hobbit first is like. I do, you know, I do. I I understand when people show their kids Star Wars and they do kind of like the modified machete order where you do episode one, two. Uh-huh. Then you go episode four, five. Uh huh. Then you do three. Then you do six. That sounds confusing. It's no. Nah. That sounds confusing. To me. I don't think it would be one, confusing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sure, but yeah. one, two, four, well, five, well, three, six. Well, because one, two, you you learn about Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Then four, five. It's like here's his kid Luke. What happened to Anakin? We love Anakin. Right. And then you still and get then, the surprise. And then it's like, oh, oh my, my god, gosh. that's Anakin. Cerveza Cristal. Yeah. And it's like, but where did they get Cerveza Cristal yeah. from? Yeah. I only show children the Cerveza Cristal edit. Yeah. And like Obi Wan's like, your father left you this Cerveza Cristal. Yeah. And then they're like, but I don't remember the Cerveza Cristal from those movies. Yeah. Let's go back and see the invention of Cerveza Cristal. Okay. Yeah. That's I why you it. do. Yeah. It. I see it now. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, the Hobbit, like, you don't need to watch The Hobbit at all <laughs> to to like to love the Lord of the Rings. Cause, sure, because what happens at the beginning of the Lord of the Rings? Uh, you've got you've got Bilbo, and he says, "Yeah, man, when I was young, some weird shit went down." Anyway, here's this ring, and then Frodo goes, "I got it." Yeah, and you can learn about that if you want. I saw The Hobbit, and I was like, "Where's the ring?" <laughs> I was sitting there. I went to a midnight showing yeah. of The Hobbit. Yeah. I just wanted to see it when the first one came out. I was like, sure, why not? And then I was like, I thought this was about a ring. Where is the ring? Oh. I don't remember a damn thing about the Hobbits either, to be clear. The ring the ring gets in there. Like, you you do get to see the ring eventually. Yeah. But uh, it's a build up to the ring. Yeah. I don't remember. It's the borrowing of the ring. It's sure. not the Lord of the Rings yet. Yeah. It's, the, it's the, hey, let me hold that ring. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, can I see that real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you have any rings in your pocket? Yeah. The movie. Do you have any rings right. on your phone? It's all <laughs> It's all that point in the wedding where they go, does somebody have the rings? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then like- And uh, then at my wedding, I said, oh shit, no, I actually don't. Really? Yeah. You forgot the ring? Well, my sister was supposed to take care of the ring. And then my sister got a little drunk. And then nobody knew where the ring was for a minute. You found it. Afterward. Oh. <gasps> After the whole ceremony? Yes. No rings at the ceremony? One of my uh one of my uh one of one of my friends that was in my my party, uh she gave me her wedding ring for the uh for the for the uh ceremony. <laughs> I'm divorced. That's probably why. I'm divorced. That's probably why it didn't work. It Anthony. all went it all went just as smoothly as that day. Yeah. Um still <laughs> No, it was, it was actually, it you was saw easier that pause. to get the, no, you I saw was, us buffering. I was deciding yeah. whether it was easier, uh, whether it was easier for Bilbo or me. Uh-huh. Who had it harder? Who had it harder? Who had a harder time with the rings? Who had a harder time with rings? And, Bilbo or me? And how do you feel? I'll believe whatever you say. <laughs> it's a toss up. It really is. Wow. It really is a toss up. Sounds like he had a pretty hard time with those rings. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> is this real Anthony Lord? It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is. is real Anthony Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, animated Twilight's coming. Yeah. Supposedly there's an animated Twilight series happening. We don't know. They mentioned the mangas. They didn't say it's based off the mangas, to be clear. They're just like, could be tied to that, I guess. That's just people trying to figure out why it would be animated. Yeah. I think that was just an executive trying to say, it, the, that's not, it's not as weird as you think. The executive didn't even say that. Oh. The executive was just like, we're doing animated and people are like, like the manga. Wait. Oh, is that what pe like people said it? Yeah. People are like, at least there, I mean, there's a manga. It could be that. He was just like, we're doing animated Twilight. It's always going to be, it was always going to be animated and it's going to be animated. And then he flipped everybody the bird. Okay. Yeah. He did a cool karate kick. Yeah. And then he left the room. He jumped out of the window. They were on the 14th story. Yeah. And then. And then he flew up in Robert Pattinson's vampire arms. Yeah. And he went. <laughs> and, they and they disappeared Straight together. into the sun. Yeah. Which he shouldn't be able to do. But he sparkled all the way there. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> the the Alex giggling is so yeah. strong today. It's weird to me that people heard that there was going to be an animated one and they immediately went, well, I guess there was a comic. It could be like the comic. That's weird to me. It's It can be based off of the same source material as the comic. Yeah. Like it doesn't need to be weird. Like nobody I knows. thought the I thought the executive said. Nope, it. nobody knows. People are just reaching for something. People are just trying to find a reason for it's, it to be animated. It's probably people just animate shit. Yeah. It's fine. There was an animated Lord of the Rings too. It's that slapped. makes a lot more sense. The animated Lord of the Rings? I think. I oh. don't know. What do I know? The orcs have a the orcs have a song that they do. Survey Sacrista. Uh it I love is that a musical. Song. Yeah, it is a musical. Yeah. The animated Hobbit and the animated Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. and I love them so much. Great. Yeah. Uh, other adaptations. We got a new trailer for that Fallout series, which is getting. Uh, people aren't loving it. What? Yeah. Have you not been seeing that? People are not loving the trailers so far. I try not to look at what people think of trailers because people never like them. Yeah. People are just like, here are the eighteen things. I hey, can I tell you something? You may. I don't know any of the people at Cinema Sins. And I've got nothing against any of the people at Cinema Sins. Sure. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I think Cinema Sins ruined mm -hmm. the way people look at movies. The yeah. the the YouTube movie channel mm. has ruined the way people look at movies because now it's like, let's find the 18 things that are wrong with this. Yeah. Here are seven things they fucked up beyond repair. Right. That mean that Twilight is the animated series is going to be bad. Yeah. Or that mean that Fallout is going to suck. Here's. I watched that Fallout trailer. Okay. And to be fair, I've mentioned it on the show before. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge Fallout guy. I'm yeah. not somebody who's played through all the Fallout games. Right. But I do love the feel and the vibe of Fallout. And mm -hmm. so I try to get into everyone. And then I remember I just don't like playing those games. Yeah. I love that there's a TV series coming. Uh huh. I watched this trailer and I said, yes, this is funny. It's weird. It's yeah. creepy. It has the vibe that I think it's supposed to have. Yeah. Walt Goggins is crushing it. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't see what's wrong with it. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'd say like a medium Fallout fan. Mm -hmm. um, I I enjoy Fallout. Yeah. I think it's cool. Uh, but I'm like, that. that's about it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not so close to it that I'm highly critical of it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll probably like this. This is a cool medium to do it in. Yeah. Um, and people were just kind of like, it's been a mixed reviews in response to it. I thought it looked really cool. I think it looks great. I think it looked really neat. Uh, but you know, again, if all, if it might just be the this, fans I'm seeing on Twitter. Yeah. Because it's Twitter. If y'all haven't seen this, it looks lovely. Uh, it's uh, uh, a woman leaves Vault 33. Mm -hmm. She's the first person to leave the vault. Yeah. And to go up to the surface. Right. Uh, her dad is Kyle McLaughlin in Vault 33. Come on. Yeah. Uh, let's show a little bit of the trailer. You can show it on yeah. my screen. Um, the the visuals are absolutely beautiful, stunning. They have exceptional that that Art Deco like retro fifties. Yeah, it they they nail it all. God, I'm gonna skip around a little bit in yeah. our hopes of getting less copywritten striked, but it, it'll probably do nothing for us. It's it's funny, you know. It's got that thing of like, it's got that fish out of water thing where she is, you know, obviously idealistic yeah. and, uh, and in an apocalypse and, and, and idealistic and innocent. And she has, she knows nothing about the surface world yeah. and just the whole vibe of this thing. Matt Berry is the voice of that medical robot. That's Matt Berry. That's very cool. They nailed it. That's Matt Berry saying, I've just got to harvest your organs. Like it's going to be so good. Looks gorgeous. Like, I think this looks stunning. She like, it looks like she meets up with, uh, a ghoul and uh, somebody from the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah. And the three of them wind up being the main characters. Yeah. And uh, the the guy who is a member of the Brotherhood mm -hmm. says, has this great line at yeah. the end of the trailer that says, everybody wants to save the world. We all just disagree on how to do it. Damn, that is good. And I'm just like, that's Fallout, dude. Yeah. That's Fallout. Yeah. I don't know why people are disliking this trailer. So I'm seeing from some answers to that in chat. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying that Fallout 1 and 2 fans are just really upset because it's very Fallout 3 and 4. I don't know how to tell Fallout 1 and 2 fans this, <laughs> but um, it's Fallout 3 and 4. Yeah. Fallout 3 and 4 are the ones. Yeah. I'm sorry. 
Um, I'm sorry. It's three. It's four. It's New Vegas. It's right. like all of those. One, Philosophy two, or- explained it as like they do have a, a shot of Shady Sands, which is right out of Fallout 1. So there yep. are some things for Fallout 1 fans, but Fallout 1 and 2 fans are just like, but not enough of us. Not enough of our thing. Not enough for me personally. I I don't know. Keep a DOS box window open while you play, I guess. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to, yeah. I don't know what to tell you, but I, yeah. I, I think- the weird thing is when people say it doesn't look like there's enough Fallout 1 and 2 in it. Yeah. It's very strange to me because Fallout 1 and 2 are in the same setting. Right. So if it looks like Fallout 1 and 2, mm-hmm. it's probably got Fallout 1 and 2 in it. Right. Just because they're focusing on things like the Brotherhood um, mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that there's no Fallout 1 and 2 in there. Right. You know? And wasn't the Brotherhood in Fallout 2? I haven't played no. Fallout 2. I'm remembering like that iconic cover and I think it was for Fallout 3. Yeah. Let me know. I think you're right. I think what you're picturing is Fallout 3. Yeah. Uh, I've only played Fallout 4, like the majority. I've taken moments in other games, but like Fallout 4 is the only game I played played. So I'm like, sweet, this is great. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think think people are really like, Mm -hmm. That's that. That's that thing where it's like it's not for true fans. It's it's a no true Scotsman thing. Yeah. Okay. Where it's just like you've got to admit and acknowledge. Yeah. That Fallout Three mm-hmm. is the one that made Fallout Three what it is. Yeah. Fallout Three. Made Fallout what it is. Yeah. Fallout yeah, yeah. Three is the thing that made the franchise what it is. Yeah. It wasn't. It was. No. It was big. It was a big deal. Like PC sure. game. But Fallout Three made it a thing that everybody talked about. Yeah. Everybody played. Yeah. And that's if you're gonna if you're gonna grab the biggest audience, right? That's the one, and probably a lot of the creative team, yeah, feels the same way. Where they were just like, man, yeah, I played the first couple, but three was the one where like, yeah, three is where it hits. Yeah. Four is great. Every, I mean, there's like a lot of mixed feelings depending on which side of the fandom you are on New Vegas, but everybody played New Vegas. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. They gave Jonathan Nolan infinity me? dollars. Yeah to make a Fallout movie. It's going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to be fine, everybody. Um, You know what might not be fine? What's well, not going to be fine? Jake Paul. Jake Paul is definitely not going to be fine. He's not fine as it stands, but yeah. in a very strange piece of news, Netflix has announced a special live event, which is rare for Netflix, uh, where Mike Tyson is going to fight Jake Paul. I, for what, for what, I mean, for money, obviously. I mean, obviously this is a big money event. Yeah, Um, that's it. Hey, what does Jake Paul get out of- Getting his ass kicked? Beating up, like trying to beat up on retired people. (laughs) Like, why does Jake Paul keep trying, keep going like, I'm the greatest fighter there ever was. In order to prove it, pluck somebody out of a literal retirement home. Yeah. I'll fight anybody in a retirement home right. right now. Yeah, Mike Tyson is just off trying to raise pigeons. Does he raise pigeons? Yeah, he has pigeons. I'm pretty sure that's a Mike Tyson thing. It's a Mike Tyson yeah, thing. Yeah, that is a Mike Tyson thing. Okay. It's a Mike Tyson I, thing. Th- if you've seen the video, dude fucking loves pigeons. He loves pigeons. Uh, in some ways that are a little uncomfortable. I, I just don't, um, you know, obviously somebody at Netflix was like, they're making a lot of money off of these one shot live events. Mm-hmm. All of this, all this YouTuber boxing and stuff that's been going on. Yeah, like we can get in on that. We can get on that. Let's get in on that. Let's test out, let's test out the old live player. See how that goes. We'll use it on this Jake Paul thing. Maybe the kids will watch Netflix. Yeah, maybe the kids will all get on Netflix. I guess. I I really genuinely don't understand. It always feels like Jake Paul is just like fucking clinging for relevancy mm-hmm. um, and everybody's just trying to shake him off and he won't let go. There's this weird thing. Did, wasn't there, somebody would have to let me know the exact details because mm-hmm. my memory of Jake Paul, listen, I got a lot of things to remember. Yeah. And uh, if Jake Paul takes up too much space in there, he's the first thing to get dumped. Oh yeah, uh, as should be. But d- didn't he have like a fight against a real fighter and they had to, they had to call it and call it a draw so Jake Paul wouldn't lose? Wasn't there something like that? I don't know enough about fighting. I know that he's gotten his ass kicked quite a few times. Like he's gotten absolutely his shit rocked. Yeah. And like for a lot of these fighters, it's like a win-win because they get a bunch of money and they know they can win. Yeah. And for Jake Paul, he's like, I don't care about winning. I care about attention. So it's like, 
yeah, everybody wins in that scenario where he gets to show up and get a bunch of attention and like the actual fighter knows that they can rock his shit, I guess. I don't like watching boxing. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, I can't watch it. It just doesn't do it for me. Um, I really, really can't handle it. Yeah, no, it's not my thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, my grandfather used to love watching the fights. My yeah. grandfather was a very violent person. Um, he used to love watching the a lot of Anthony Lord today. And when, uh, and when he, when he got, uh, when he got old and he could barely see, mm -hmm. he used to say, he used to hand me the remote and say, put the fights on. And if there are no fights on, turn it to the channel where the animals eat each other. Jesus Christ. I'm like, okay, grandpa. Yeah. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. Those are all the things I don't want to see. Those are like. That's I'd everything. have to turn it to Animal Planet and just be like, I'm sorry, Grandpa, it's not a violent one. They're talking about <laughs> migrating birds. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't see violence right now. I apologize. I'm sorry I don't have violence on demand for you, Grandpa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is that Christ. what VOD stands for? Yeah, violence on demand. Wow. Yeah. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Uh, I when I say I'll catch you in the VOD, you better run. That's right. <laughs> Catch these hands in the VOD. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, the Jake Paul thing, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously Netflix is going to do this. They're going to test their live player and they're going to see what kind of a draw this is. Netflix has been yeah. trying to make a play into sports uh -huh. because they're going up against the Disney, ABC, ESPN monolith that controls sports. Yeah. Uh, so they really want to get like a foothold in there. Yeah. I could see them trying to use boxing or or fighting as a way to get in. Yeah. Because those are big pay-per-view events where mm -hmm. like, instead of giving 50 bucks a month for the pay-per-view event that's on, yeah. give, I mean, it's basically 50 bucks a month for Netflix now. Right. At least you get canceled Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you get that. Uh, but I don't know. Like Jake Paul, here's like, he was making, so, he was already making so much money yeah. Without having to get head injuries, uh huh. Why would you sign up for concussions if you're already rich? Is something I've never understood. Well, I think he was making less money and losing relevancy as just being a YouTuber. I think that people were hating him as a YouTuber, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Well, what would people pay me to continue to do?" They'd love to see me get clocked. Yeah, and that's genuinely true. Like you, a lot of the stuff that was drummed up initially of watching Jake Paul fights was a bunch of people that fucking hated Jake Paul and wanted to see him get beat up. And, and the Paul like, brothers he does are, win sometimes. Yeah, and the Paul brothers are smart about stuff like this. Yeah, the Paul brothers love to play into. They're like, oh, an audience will wa will hate watch this. Yeah, and like Logan Paul's uh, version of that was, I'm gonna go buy a bunch of money uh, in like tax or like buy a bunch of land in tax havens where uh, I, as a white person, get a bunch of incentives to buy up land that is taken from locals yeah. um, and, and then, start a podcast. Yeah, and, and then I'll also do, uh, who's going to sponsor my podcast? Oh, right. uh, we'll just pump and dump crypto. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, different approaches. <laughs> different approaches. Different approaches for these brothers. I would say that at this point, I probably do, based on those two strategies, uh -huh. have more respect for Jake Paul. At least Jake Paul is like, well, I'll stand around and get hit for money if that's what you want to see. Yeah. And I'll take my licks, uh, but at least I'll still get paid. Whereas Logan Paul is just like, still criming. He is still criming. He's still criming pretty hard. Yeah, he's still actively doing a bunch of online crimes. So uh, I would say no to both. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. And Logan Paul is technically in the WWE. Sure, now. technically, that's yeah. right. Uh, I think apparently he's actually doing it. I remember when he got added in and everybody was like, what the fuck, man? And apparently he's actually pretty good at wrestling. <clears throat> I don't. Mm. But he's also doing crypto scams and buying up land in countries that have tax havens and incentives for white people to move there and start businesses uh, and promoting crypto. He's going to pump and dump on you on his podcast. That's he's, also true. Uh, Flannel Fries is saying he's <laughs> the U.S. champion belt and all. Got, folks, remember what I said where I said mm -hmm. the Paul brothers know exactly what to do to make people hate watch them. Mm -hmm. The WWE has always been good at that as well. Yeah, they are going to hate when I say this, but wrestling isn't real. They like when the WWE wrestling When is not Logan real. Paul sits down with the WWE and makes a deal. Yeah. The belt is definitely part of the deal because they know everybody's going to be annoyed by that. Right. And looking good in the ring is going to be part of the deal because they know everybody's going to be annoyed by that. Yeah. Um 
I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> I don't people know how to so, tell you these things. People are so upset. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I know. Oh no, my my reality. Oh no. It's broken. My immersion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. Um that's all the, the hard truths I'm gonna give you for today. Yeah. Um but everybody, that is also all of the show that we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us and spending your morning with us. Uh, we've got a little bit of a, a schedule update coming up. Uh, it's Too Early is going to be uh, changing up the schedule soon. We'll make a formal announcement probably in the Discord, I would say. That's right. We're going seven days a week. That's the opposite of what's happening. Oh. Uh, well, no, we're not going no days a week, so I guess it's not the opposite. Uh, we're probably going to switch up and move over to a, a two show a week schedule so that we can bring you more other content mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so it's not anybody going anywhere. It's just a matter of we can do more other things. So yeah. that's it. We're just going to rotate some stuff into the schedule that we're super excited about. Uh, and we will share more in a formal announcement. So it's good changes. It's going to be great. But like I said, we'll make a formal announcement about all of that for you very soon. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to thank everybody that supported us live during the broadcast today. However, there's a bunch of ways that you can do so if you want to support our show and all the other things that we make. You can go to patreon.com slash pixel circus for $5 a month. You can get yourself a bonus clip from It's Too Early every single week. We give you an extra 10 minutes to an hour and a half of content. Who knows? For $50 Depends. a week, I'll give you a lock of my hair every week. Every week? Yeah, for everybody who signs up. You heard him. That's, that seems, is that too much? Should I charge 25 a week? You should charge more. More? I don't know. I don't want to do that to them. I don't want to do that to your hair. You do have a beautiful head of hair. You do. <laughs> uh, you can also do things like just tell a friend about the show. You could post about it when it goes live, share it with a friend, let somebody know who you think might like the show. That's free and super helpful for us. That's right. Uh, and uh, very cool. You can subscribe here. We're trying to work towards Partner Plus, I guess. So uh, sure. if you do drop those subs, we appreciate that. That's awesome of you. We're, Thank we're working you. towards so many- Casually. So lightly. many goalposts that are being moved from us all the time by various platforms. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, do be sure to subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> That's very important. Yeah, like the video, leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts on anything that we covered today. We would love to hear your opinions on it. Uh, I really do want to get into the habit. We're going to try and start pulling back some of those comments from previous episodes on YouTube and talking about your opinions on the show for those who missed the conversation live. Yeah, and uh, we're going to look at some of those uh, comments and have some of you arrested. I'll see you in jail, friends. <laughs> All right, uh, Anthony, when you're not here, where are you? Uh, I am everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, mm -hmm. except for here on Twitch where I'm at Anthony Carboni. And uh, my science comedy podcast with Jeff Kanata is We Have Concerns, and that's at wehaveconcerns.com or uh, wherever you get podcasts. Mm -hmm. I think Kroger. Okay. Yeah, pick one up at the checkout line. Yeah, where are you? You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I will be back to streaming on my channel tomorrow, which I'm excited about because I've been gone. And I never do this, but hey, uh, I applied for Twitch ambassador and like, I think it would be really cool. So if you wanted to be at Twitch and tell them I should be a Twitch ambassador, I think that would be me. Do you get diplomatic immunity? Yes. I'm really trying to, to stay out. I'm out on bail right now. Woo. Uh, no, but seriously, if you do want to tweet at Twitch and tell them that I would make a good Twitch ambassador, I think that would be kind of neat. I put in my application uh, and we do a lot of stuff here on Twitch and I have for five years. So like- I don't know. Let her ambass. Let me ambass. Uh, Alex, how about you? Howdy. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy and lots of other places on the internet. Alex Teplitz on Instagram. I'm just hanging out this week. Alex, your hair looks great today. Yeah. Thank you. It's great a little, hair day. A little scruffed. It's, it's, it's doing something. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. It's great. Because I'm sexy and old now. That's there right. we go. Aging right. in front of us. He's a, he's a bit of a silver fox now. Yeah. yeah watch out. <laughs> the ripe old age of 25. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for those who supported us here on the stream during the stream. Uh, there are ways that you can do that through your subscriptions. You can use your Twitch Prime sub for free if you're into that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we have a donation bar that runs throughout the month. It's also just like direct money for things like eating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of different ways. Whatever way you prefer to spend money. Hey, <laughs> we give you the option. We, we just, just to make it clear, money doesn't get to us any other way. Yeah. This is it. We don't, uh, there's nothing else. So we, yeah. Was, we don't uh, have sponsors on the show. I wonder why. Uh, uh, so we appreciate everything uh, that y'all do. Uh, hey, if you're a patron, we'll see you in a, we'll little see little in a few minutes. And if not, we'll see you in jail. Bye. Bye.